Oh, wow. You guys are so fast. Hi, Diana. Hi, Chow. Hi, Susie. Hi, Melanie. Hello, Katie. Hi, Sally. I lost all my foil paper. Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome. Come in. Come on in. Come on in. Hello. Welcome. Um, Chow, can you post a post in the FSC, please? How is everybody doing? Jen, you send the most beautiful foiled cards, though. Nope, everybody's just coming in. I see 31 folks and 11 thumbs up. Happy National Daughters Day to all the daughters. I have my beautiful little mini me daughter hanging out with us tonight. I don't know what she's doing. What are you doing over there? Coloring or something? She's drawing something. It says it started 76 minutes ago. I just logged on. It's been live for three minutes. Hello, Annette from Montreal. Laura Ann says, can't wait till Monday. All right, so the premise of tonight's video is I'm leaving Monday for Florida, so I will be without my craft room and you guys for a week. So I hope that Tracy, Stacy, Chow, and T are all having videos going live this week. Um, I will have five videos going live on Monday. I've been showing sneak peeks. Remind me at the end, someone, to show you some more in-depth sneak peeks, okay, at the end of this. Um, the point of this video is to kind of answer questions. Is Abraham on here? Abraham said he wanted some basic questions answered. He better be on here because this was his request. Um, so, uh, there he is, okay. You're under the wrong name again, Abraham. So, um, you know, for those of you that are new to our group, which is Foiling Snobs Club at Facebook, new to my channel, welcome. I think last time I checked, I have over 137 videos just on toner foiling and a lot of videos on hot foiling. And this is the time of year when foiling really starts to pick up because we're all making Christmas cards. So with Christmas, and New Year's, you know, holiday cards is when we get out all of our fancy stuff. Hi, Darlene in Las Vegas. Um, and we want to make elegant, pretty cards. So I'm going to talk about the basics of toner foiling. Um, we're not going to have giveaways today, but I want you guys to make sure you're subscribed to my channel because I'm going to have giveaways over the next few weeks of foiling products. Hello, Nikki. So... Uh, I wanted to show you guys some of the giveaways that we're going to have, um, and I wanted to show you the difference. For those of you um, that are in the U.S., 
we have this company called um, H and H, and a lot of you have been new to my channel and asking me, "Hey, where's Creative Vision Stamps?" Um, Creative Vision Stamps retired, so what we did is we did some research, and we found a company which may or may not have been her supplier. I don't know. I kind of doubt it, but this company was the company we found that had the least expensive pricing for what we call textile foil. Now, textile foil is originally designed to be used on your t-shirts. If you have a plain t-shirt and you want to do a design and it's foiled, um, that's where this comes in. You do have to use an adhesive for it, um, but it's textile, it's much thicker, it doesn't have static cling, you have better full coverage, it's just a beautiful, beautiful foil. Um, so this is the company we found for the FSC because foil is not cheap, you guys, right? So uh, most of the time you're gonna buy, when you first start out, deco foil sheets, deco foil um, comes in rolls or it comes in pre-cut sheets, and you're going to pay seven eight bucks for that and when you pay seven or eight bucks you know maybe you can get um i don't know five six card panels done so the company we found is h and h foil and we will have a link we do have an affiliate link and what they do is every quarter um they give me store credit and then i buy all of these foils and i cut them in half and i mail them out to you guys as freebies okay so for this year i have stocked up on red and green obviously for christmas and this is if you want to go buy it i'll tell you the colors this is uh, just red and you get a large 12 inch roll and it's 25 feet of foil and i want to say it's around 11 bucks maybe 12. okay the plain colors like this are much cheaper than the holographic ones Okay, so I will cut this in half and you will get a six inch roll, um, 25 feet of foil. Thank you, Shelly. Okay, the green, this is the holographic rainbow green. So it's like a lime green holographic, but I just thought the plain red with the holographic green, I thought they paired nicely together. So when I do my giveaways, I'm gonna pair them up that way. Um, this is for Halloween, for those of you that are doing Halloween. Yes, Bernie, it's a fabulous price. So this one is called Glitter Stars and Orange. Okay, and then this is a really deep dark purple and it is called Midnight Purple. Okay, $7.99 for plain, $11.99 for the others. Thank you, Cheryl, for checking. And please use our link. Our link will take you right to the foil page, okay? These I thought would be great for Christmas or New Year's. So this is gold sequins and silver sequins. Very, very pretty, okay? And this is only for the US, don't worry. If you are out of the country, I have another option. And then this is the hollow rainbow blue and uh, cracked ice in blue. Cracked ice comes in blue and pink. But I thought these would be a good pairing for, hello, Paper Diva, for um, wintery mix cards, okay? So these are the colors I got. I got a few rolls of each. I will be cutting them in half. And when I get back, we're gonna do some giveaways. But I wanted to show you the difference between value, um, and I am not, I am not um, downing deco foil at all. It is good foil. I have lots of deco foil. Um, However, I just think for the value, if you can spend $7 for a pack of foil, why not spend $9 and get a whole roll that's gonna last you much longer? And this is only a small sampling of what they have. Um, and I will say the advantage to H&H is they do ship quickly and their prices are reasonable. The disadvantage is they are a small company. Um, they're a family owned company. They're in Kentucky. So you do have to be quick with ordering from them. I would advise you just to order one roll at a time. Um, you may think you need two or three rolls, but you don't. One roll, yes, these foils are thicker. You don't have the static cling. Um, Cheryl reminds us, yes, that they have shipping. If you order $49.99 or more, it is free shipping. Um, oh yeah, the silver and blue for Hanukkah, that's a great idea. I think these two. 
yeah or they have a nice beautiful royal blue as well so i'm just saying this is a small sampling of what you get and if you order the deco foil um it's a much smaller roll you don't get as much so if you are in the u.s this is your best value to go to for foil um in comparison to what else is is out there now if you prefer deco foil we have deco foil links as well we have the thermo web link um, i do like the deco foil duo gel i use that all the time with the um stencils so i wanted to show you guys that let me move these guys out of the way and this is toner foiling so this is foiling with your mink or your laminator realize that I also got regular green so here's regular green if you want a more traditional color scheme it's called green and here's red tsxcr4 and tsxcn1 red and green I have this gnat that will not leave me alone all right and I will cut those in half and send them to you they only send you, not hot foil, these are all toner foils, Jen. Um, they will send you uh, a full inch roll. They do not cut in half. If you need to, um, if you need to have your foils cut in half, you're going to have to ask your handyman in your life to use a chop saw. You tape it off and then have them cut it um, to cut them in half. Okay. Okay. The other question I get is what kind of paper should we be using? If you do not have a laser printer, if you watch Lisa at Local King Rubber Stamps, what Lisa has done is she has stamped her stamps out in black ink and then she scanned them into her computer and then she has printed them with her laser printer. So you can do that with stamps. If you don't have a laser printer, you do the same thing. You stamp them out in black ink I was just trying to see if I had any samples to show you guys. And then um, you stamp them out all in black. And then what? Then you go to your copy shop. So you go to, um, you know, Staples or FedEx or Kinko's or whatever copy shop you have. And they copy it with a laser printer. And you can get four on a sheet of eight and a half by 11. You go home and you foil it at home. But it has to be laser printed, toner printed. It cannot be... Uh, ink jet printed okay so that is the secret to foiling it has to be laser printed it will not work with an ink jet printer um, I will recommend a mink over a laminator if you're going to use a laminator make sure that it heats up for a minimum of 30 minutes and we are talking toner foil not hot foil so we are not talking spellbinders glimmer we're not talking um, Gemini foil press foil or we are memory keepers foil or the Cricut foil those are all hot foils you do not want to use those okay um, so you would if you stamp this one out without the coloring put four on a sheet take it to the copy shop they make four copies and then you bring it home and you foil it that would work as well when you foil it um, you cannot sell these because you are copying the stamped image that someone has made into a stamp, you can use it for personal use. So I probably should have did that. This would have been a really good um, sample to do that. Um, these, by the way, are from Northwoods Rubber Stamps if you're looking for a Halloween stamps. Okay, uh, the second thing people ask me is paper, paper, paper. So first thing is make sure you have the right foil. Second thing is to make sure it's printed correctly. Third thing is to make sure you are using a high quality machine. I'm always going to recommend a mink machine. And somebody in our group had posted that their machine was making an awful clicking noise. So I'm just going to be quiet for a second. You hear it? That is perfectly normal for the machine to be making clicking noise, okay? That is not abnormal. It's also normal the first few times you use it. If there's a kind of a burnt plastic smell, that's normal. Uh, what's not normal is for it to catch on fire. That's not normal. Um, <laughs> um, sometimes the rollers do get red hot in there, but 
once the heat is dissipated, it works, okay? The key is to make sure that it goes in the front and comes out the back if it gets stuck. This has a release button. What you do is you turn the machine off, you hit this release button, and what it does is it unclamps the two rollers inside. So there's a roller up here and a roller down here. And what it does is it unclamps those rollers so you can pull your uh, toner sheet out. Yes, unplug it when you're not using it, okay? But with a laminator or a mink, you want to turn them on. Some of them beep, some of them don't beep. That doesn't matter. Sometimes the light is red, sometimes the light is green. That doesn't matter. This is an older Heidi Swap one. You can see, or not Heidi Swap, Anna Griffin one. That's why it's kind of gold in color. And I just put some, um, I put some Arteza holographic um, vinyl on it to make it pretty. Okay. All right. Hello, Blue Bonnet. Ooh, we just did a Blue Bonnet video last week. Okay. Yes, and always remember to unplug it when you're done. Okay. And the last thing I want to talk about is paper. Paper makes a huge difference in your foiling. I know we like to think, well, it's just paper. We can color on it. We can um, stamp on it. We can cut it out. We can die cut it. But no, 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 no. When it comes to foiling, hey, Michelle, um, you have to have the right kind of paper because Foil is very delicate. As you guys know, it's very wispy. Here's some blue, here's some, uh, blue bonnet foil right here. So foil is very wispy. And this top part is foil. And then at the bottom here, there's um, a transfer, right? So toner foil doesn't have adhesive in it like hot foil does. So hot foil, there's actually an adhesive built in where when this touches heat, it will stick and um, toner foil doesn't have that. So you do have to be careful what kind of foil you're using, but you wanna make sure you're using the right paper. If you try to foil on something that's very porous and bumpy, the foil is not going to adhere to that very well. Foil likes very smooth surfaces, so you want a good quality paper. So the paper that we recommend is the Hamilco Semi-Gloss or Glossy, um, they have 80 or 100 pound. It really does not matter. They're both very, very similar. But this paper is has a very light coating on it. I know my camera just unfocused there. So you can see when the light hits it, you can see there's a little bit of a sheen. It's almost a satiny sheen. It is not glossy, not like photo paper. There you go. Okay, this paper doesn't look pearlescent. It's just a white paper that's super smooth and it accepts toner prints very well. You can also ink blend on this. So if you needed a particular color of paper, it's very hard to foil on colored paper. So um, I always recommend white and then you tint it. If you want to go off and experiment with um, other papers you have in your stash, by all means, go ahead. Um, some papers work better than others. Some vellums work great. Some pearlescent papers work great. Just remember every paper is different because of the coating that's on those papers. I mean, if you have something like this, you can try to print on it and foil it. It may work, it may not work. You're, you're gonna have to try on your own. And this is again, all for toner um, when you are going through your, your laser printer, okay? So H&H &H and Hamilco is what I'm going to recommend for my US friends. Um, you can get Hamilco on Amazon and H&H. &H, we have a website for them if you can use my Amazon link and H&H, &H, okay? No, H&H &H does not ship to Canada. So let's talk about international real quick. All right. So for my international friends, and I'm going to go more into detail when I come back from Florida, you guys. Um, I am always, always going to recommend for our international friends, Crafty Critter. And let me just show you how awesome these folks are. And I'm gonna do a little sampling here. Okay. All right. So Crafty Krita, not only now do they make their own paper, they're based out of Australia, by the way. So this is their toner paper. So again, you and it comes, when you guys get it, it's 50 sheets in there. Um, but this is that same smooth paper. And you'll notice I always keep my paper in the packaging. And that's because I don't want any dust or pet hair getting in there. So they do sell 
that. So if you are not in the U.S. and you can't get a hold of Hamilco, this is another option for you guys. But Crafty Critter will ship anywhere in the world, okay? So, yes, and Blue Bonnet does as well. Um, Blue Bonnet we use for our hot foiling supplier. So let me open up this beautiful box of goodness they sent me. So when I come back from Florida, we're going to talk about all of these beautiful colors. They have that. I just used this on a video. You, will, you guys will see this soon. This is called Celebration Rainbow. And again, this is all toner foil. This is the Silver Holographic Rainbow. Here is Let's Party, which is a nice fuchsia stars. Purple Holographic. Um, they have tie-dyed. So obviously ton of foil and you can see they've sent me multiples Ooh, this one's new golden bling they've sent me multiples because you know it we're gonna do a giveaway oh that is cool let me show you guys this oh this is cool did i see scott jump on here this is Cool. Hold on. Let me. I'm gonna peel the sticker off. The sticker came right up too. I'll cut it. Cut it a little bit. Oh, this will be Nancy's roll. Nancy does not have this one. Okay. Oh my God! I butchered the foil. Poor foil. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can see this. Hi, Scott. There you are. So it's gold holographic foil, but it says genuine original. Can you guys see that? That is cool. Genuine original. I love that. Talk about for like encouraging cards and just putting a little secret message in there for somebody. That's cool. That's fancy. Yes. So I have a couple of rolls of that. But what's really cool about um, Crafty Critter, and again, I, I, I want to do a full demonstration just on this stuff when I come back from Florida, but I wanted to tell you um, what it is. What did you say, Abraham? Abraham said something here. I missed it. We need to come up with a giveaway song or a jingle. Yeah. All right, so I'll show you guys what I love about them. Okay, first of all, their customer service is amazing. Second of all, um, you know, they have a wide variety of foil, not just um, the foil, but the designs in the foil. So a lot of colors they have over, Scott, was it over 50 now? I think it's, it's more than 50. Okay, when they send you the foils, they also send you the little swatches so you can write down and put your swatches in here and I just put mine away but I have mine all rubber band together so I know which ones they are 65 colors Scott just said 65 colors from Crafty Krita but their foil art is amazing I'm gonna move this off the desk again their foil art you guys don't even know how jumbo this box is. It must have cost an arm and a leg just to ship it to me from Australia, but oh my gosh. Okay, their foil art is high quality, high um, toner printed images that you don't have to have a laser printer. Um, you're going, <laughs> Kathy said, wow, that's foil-tastic, yes. So you get these high quality images. They give you the directions. Oh my gosh, I can't open it. You know what? I thought I was going to be all fancy with these new nails, you guys, but they're so not me. <laughs> oh, you should have saw me fishing today. <laughs> Although, Nancy did manage to pull a trout in today. All right. So, yes, they also have, Stacy. thank you for the reminder. They have SVG, so if you have um, an electronic die cutting machine, you can cut out the images wow look at these sunglasses oh we're gonna play with these i said we weren't but we are yes there is a little bit of a gloss i can't say it's glossy it's not glossy it's just um a, a light coating it's like satiny all right we're gonna play with these look at this one shine bright shine bright like a diamond these are cool 
Yes, silky, sheen, yes. I wear my sunglasses at night. But do you see how thick and black that toner is? That's what's gonna give you a good quality image. Not that you can't get that from your home printer, but I'll be honest, it takes time to go over there, print out an image, find an image, print it out, cut it out. Why, I don't need to do that when somebody else has done all of that for me. These are backgrounds. Hello, Summer. So, yeah, these are super cool. We're gonna, I'm gonna leave this one out because I'm gonna play with that one. Um, but, oh, by the way, Scott, I really love the extras you put in here, which I cannot show on uh, a camera because uh, definitely YouTube will not monetize me, uh, but I will be sending these to all my little friends. <laughs> so I'll show you guys these. These are like coasters. Family, laugh, friends, drinks together, food, memories. So this is cool. You can have that as a coaster. They come like this. They come naked. And then you can paint them. You can deco foil them. Uh, not yours. Not yours. Get your own. And then the other one has my favorite word on it, which starts with the letter F. And I have one for each of my little friends that I will send them. So, yes. Uh, they, they, these are really, really cool uh, cutouts. <laughs> uh, but I wanted to show you guys the foil art. And like I said... I will be doing a full reveal of these and we'll be playing with these when I get back from Florida. So one thing that has exploded in the crafting world this year is slimline foiling. And I will be honest and say, oh, Tracy's doing foiling right now, that I um, was not a slimline fan, you guys. I was like, oh, I don't know if I'm going to like doing that. Well, I find myself doing more and more slim lines. So Nancy, who wasn't going to do slim lines, jumped on the slim line wagon. And uh, yeah, I have quite a few slim lines here that I have done um, and more to come. So I really like the slim lines. I like the fact that it fits in a regular envelope. Um, I like the fact that I can put a lot more on a card so I don't feel like I'm being um, pressed for space. So I, I do like the slim line. I also like that you can cut the slim lines down. So if you don't want to do a slim line, you can do a smaller card. But for those of us that are going to be sending um, checks or money, <gasps> I don't know if Stacy saw that, <laughs> in, in your cards, it makes it a lot easier. You guys, you did know? I gotta open this one. Oh, Jerry saw the gnomes. Oh my gosh. I have not looked. At, oh. Please tell me there are SVGs for these. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I think the gnomes are gonna sell out before I even get to show them. Bernie said, no, my gosh, they're, they're, uh, so cute. So, oh, you guys, these are super cute and they're easy to cut out because they're big. You can make them as a slim line or a five by seven. Oh my gosh. Those are super cute. I was not expecting to see gnomes. Gnomes are very trendy as well right now. I better tell you guys the number. I know you guys are already on your hot little hands. SVGs are coming, okay. And remember, Scott has been generous enough to send Nancy a few of these, so you can see there's doubles in here. So that means I will be giving a lot of these away. Uh, are these available, Scott, or should I not be showing these yet? Oh, look at this one. <gasps> did you guys see my video I did with Spellbinders where I did the ink blending? Oh. That would look so cool. And then you foil this. Oh, there's a secret gnome in there. So if you're not totally in the gnomes, you get one gnome in there. Oh, this is cool. The car with the tree on top. Another Bethlehem scene. There's a car with a different tree on top. I missed it.
And if you, you know what else I like these car ones for? Here it is. Is you got a kid moving, going to college, somebody's just moving in. You can easily cut this out and put packages or suitcases on there. Scott's asking if he should make these live for you guys or do you want to wait until I do a full on uh, unboxing? I was not planning on doing a full unboxing, you guys. I was really going to just do some basic foiling and answer questions. So I'm not going to show a whole bunch here. I'll just quickly go through these. Oh my gosh, some snarky little sentiments. These are cute. These are cute. Okay, so anyway, I'm not going to show all of them. These are the slim line. <laughs> Pam, they, Pam said live now, please. All right, so Crafty Critta has sent me more than enough to give away as well. So I will do the giveaway when I get back. Um, something new they've started. There's still more in here? Oh my gosh, Scott, this, this box is packed. And there's more foil in here? Okay, you guys, wow. I don't think I can get it all back in the box. It's one of those things. I don't know how you packed it all in there. Okay, so we have some regulars too for you guys that don't need just um, slim line. And I'm trying to keep up with the comments here. Okay, you guys are making Scott work. He's going to turn, he's going to activate the website now. Okay, all right. Now, don't forget, uh, we do have a small discount code with Crafty Critter. It is FSC05. Okay, um, I will say that uh, keep in mind too that when you are ordering from Australia, shipping does take a little bit, but they are super quick to ship. Um, that there is a dollar conversion from you from Australian to US and it's usually cheaper. Okay. All right, so these are tags, ready to cut tags. And they have different kits. One, two, three, four, five. So again, I'm not gonna show you all of them. Wow. Looks like eight. 17 kits, 17 tag kits, and again, more than enough for Nancy to give away with the foil. Thank you, T. How are you feeling, T? Okay, so let's look and see what these guys are. Ready to cut tags. Okay, so you can use these in your electronic die cutting machine. You can use these if you have a die cutting machine, like I have the the Tim Holtz dies, the tag dies. So these are really simple. You can leave them just like this and put them on top of a card. You don't have to make these in the tags. Okay, these are cute. I really like these. All right, so that one was kit one. Daisy, you can use a laminator. We recommend a mink because you're going to get better quality with the mink. But yes, you can use a laminator. Just let your laminator heat up for a minimum of 30 minutes. And you may have to use additional shims with your, um, with your thing. Oh, it's a snowman gingerbread man. And Scott, correct me, but I think you guys design most of these designs in house. Oh my gosh. That is cute. Merry Maskmas. <laughs> Tis the season of sparkle. You do that with some some sparkly holographic foil merry christmas peace on earth so a lot of tags that's two and i'm sure if you go to their website they have a breakdown of everything that's in there yeah and i know a lot of you are still um kind of in self-quarantine because you have family members that could be compromised there's a mini car and so these are great just to send out a little reminder if you have friends that want to stop in. I know like Chow with the new baby, she doesn't want anybody um, 
you know, coming in and, and exposing the baby. So it's a nice way to send somebody a little mask card and say, hey, you know, appreciate the thought, but we have somebody that could be compromised for COVID. So would love to see you, but we'll have to make a rain date. Aw, best Christmas gift ever. And it got a baby elephant on it. Oh my gosh. What do you want for Christmas? I won't answer that live, but I think you guys can figure it out. All right. <laughs> uh, yes, I'm always going to say, Vicki, that a mink is always going to give you better results. Yep. So, obviously, they I'm not going to go through all these. They have all these tags, 18 different little tags. I like the tags. I don't use them for tags. I use them to put on the top of my card, so I will layer them with some pretty... Um, glitter foiled card stock in the back and then layer these on top so great for quick and easy cards and then they have uh, their regulars so again a giant pack of these these are your normal cards that you can cut down to pretty much any size you want and these are not holiday these are floral wow lots of new floral sentiments you guys, you know I always need happy birthday. Oh, these are cool. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. I wanted to show you guys the reason we are live. Thank you, Abraham, is... Um, Abraham has the mink. I have sent him some foiling. But he is new to, um, you know, just doing the basics to foiling. So we're going to help walk him through it. Um, and I bought these. I got these from Simon Says Stamps. Um, I think I paid $4. I don't remember what I paid. There's four sheets. And these are really thick, but I wanted to show you the difference with foiling something as tiny as this. These small sentiments, in my opinion, are not going to foil very well. Um, we're going to foil those, and then we're going to foil some of this um, new foil art from Crafty Critter. And you guys keep asking questions. If you're not a member of the Foiling Snobs Club, I have amazing, amazing admins. I have... Cece, Tracy, and Tracy, and Chow, and they have all gone to the School of Foiling, and um, they're very good with their foiling, and we are very particular, and we kind of joke around and say we're foiling snobs because it has to be 100%, you know, 95% to 100% foiled for it to be foiling snobs approved. So let's see what we get here. says I need to get a craft loan. Okay. Let me just make sure I can see all the comments. And my guys, if I miss the question, they'll ding me and tell me Nancy missed a question, but I'll try to answer. Okay. So I'm going to tell you that I am going to be using um, my mink. I have it set on three. It's been running. It's been clicking. Again, those of you that may have joined us late, Clicking is normal, not going to hurt anything. A key tool you must have when foiling is a dusty, dusty brush, okay? Not an embossing buddy, not an embossing bag. We want to eliminate particles from our foiling. We do not want to in introduce dust, glitter, any of those things. So do not use an embossing buddy. It is not a static cling issue. It is a dust issue. Okay. Okay. Here we go. And I will be using the mink um, cover transfer folders. You can make your own. Um, Lisa from Local King Rubber Stamps actually just laminated a couple pieces of paper to get a couple pieces of laminator together and she made her own so this is just a laminator sheet so it doesn't open or close but it gives you that thick protection if you want to use those and these are you know all of these are very easily disposable so when you get foil on there like that you can throw it out um these the best place place to buy them is um 
scrapbook.com. We have a link there, two in a pack for $4.74. The big ones, if you have Big Mama Mink, and Big Mama Mink has a couple advantages. Number one, she's huge, she's ginormous. So if you're gonna be doing regular laminating and you need full sheets of laminating, you can get Big Mama. She's much heavier, she takes up a lot of space, and she usually works one degree cooler. So if you're using Big Mama Mink, you might need her on four, okay? Um, but everything we do in foiling takes trial and error. And that's why I do these videos because you'll see not everything's going to be perfect for me. Depends on your foil. Depends on your toner printout. Depends on the heat of your machine. Sometimes this machine gets too hot and we need to back it down. Um, uh, Farley, I use a brother printer. It is in the FSC guides. And Stacy uses a Canon printer. Yep. Um... It's in my Amazon shop as well. You may have to step up to a newer model because mine's about three, four years old now. Okay. Um, no. Because Mama Mink has longer rollers, it takes her longer to heat up. So you have to go to a four with Mama Mink where Baby Mink is three uh, because it's already hot because it's a shorter distance of travel for the heat. So it doesn't dissipate as fast. So I notice on my small mink, it's a three. When I go to my bigger mink, I got to go to a four. Again, try your own machine, printer, foils. It's all gonna, you want to make sure, though, that you are using some kind of a cover sheet. I do recommend these. The big sheets, the 12 by 12 sheets, Joann's has those on sale, and you can normally uh, use a coupon on them. Uh, but for these small guys, and you always want to have several of them because inevitably it happens to everybody Sometimes a corner gets caught in the rollers and then the machine starts to eat it and it's like, okay, and that happens to everybody. You don't panic. That's when you shut the machine off. Let me, let me show you a sampling here. Now this machine doesn't do it as much as my other mink. My other mink likes to eat them all. You put this in and say, you start to hear it crunching up. You really do and you see it's not coming out the backside. What you're going to do is turn the machine off on the back, and this is for the large or the small. Now, the large one has a reverse button, so on the large one, it will, it will eject it. The small one doesn't, so we're going to turn the machine off, then we're going to hold this release button, okay? You hold the release button. You might need someone to help you. Then you're going to pull this out, and it will come out, okay? Do not try to jam it, pull it, stretch it. It will cause damage. Occasionally, I've had some people tell me they've had to take their machine apart. So uh, if you use these heavy-duty plastic heat-resistant sheets, they're designed for the machine. You will have less of that. Uh, it does happen all the time. But you want to use mink. If you're going to make your own, you take your own, um, you take your own uh, 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 printer in your hands. I mean, your own mink in your hands. I'm telling you the best way to treat your mink so that you don't have, and I always say have a few. Once your mink eats it, don't try to revive it. It's not worth it. You're just going to have problems with your foiling later. Your foiling will get wrinkled. Um, I can tell you, you know, I probably have more foiling videos than anybody else out there, and I have this many folders, so don't take any chances. You know, when your, when your folder starts to get wrinkled, throw it away. Now, as far as staining from foil and toner sheets, that we can take care of. When toner gets on here, which is normal, you can see the little black spots on here. You can see there's foil transfer on here. Here's marker transfer. That's okay. You can use a little bit of acetone, pure acetone, not nail, not nail, polish remover with conditioners because the conditioners are oily and they will cause your um, folders to get uh, smoky looking and they're gross. So make sure you use acetone, that's 100% acetone, without conditioner. So it's going to say on the bottle, 100% acetone. You do not want the kind that says with vitamin E, nourishing, or anything like that. You just take a little bit of that on a cotton swab and rub it off, okay? All right, here we go. So um, I cannot stand when people say, oh, just put it back through your machine and unwrinkle your folder. Don't do that. It's not going to work. 
it's not worth the aggravation. Throw it away, have a couple extra, and you'll be fine. All right, so I really wanted to show you guys something else too, which is how do you know if it's hot foil or regular foil? So the other day I played with a whole bunch of hot foils and that's a piece of leftover hot foil. By the way, hot foil company we do recommend is Blue Bonnet. Um, you can get Spellbinders, you can get Gemini. I talked about that in many other videos. This is not a hot foiling program, but a lot of people say, well, how do I tell the difference between hot foil and regular foil? So all you do, you take a regular piece of paper, okay? You take a little sampling of your foil. Now, I already know this is hot foil, so we already know what's going to happen here. You then take your piece of paper and your foil, and this is great for you guys that didn't know you should keep your foil separated. You should keep your hot foils and your regular foils, toner foils, separated. So I have a bucket for my hot foils. I have a bucket for my toner foils. They do not ever get mixed. They never get played with at the same time. You really don't need to foil anything more than 80 to 100 pounds. So if you're foiling anything thicker than 80 to 100 pounds, because most likely you're attaching it to a pretty thick cardstock, I don't recommend getting 100 pounds for foiling. 80 pound will work great because if your cardstock is thick, I mean, this is 120 pound cardstock, you don't need a thick piece to foil on and put your card on. Does that make sense? So uh, if you're foiling thicker card, um, there really isn't a reason for it in my opinion. You may have a different opinion of that, which is fine. Try try what you want. But even, you know, 60 pound or 80 pound going on as your cover sheet will foil just fine. Um, one of the advantages to the Crafty Critter toner sheets is it is a little thinner. And because it is a little thinner, it takes that foil much easier than the thicker cardstock that I use. All right. So how do you tell hot foil from toner foil is if this were toner foil, it would fall right off of here. But because I know this is hot foil and what did I say hot foil has? Hot foil has adhesive built into it. Okay, Nance, what the heck? <laughs> Maybe it's not. I know this is hot foil. I was just using it. Let me turn my heat up here because this is thicker cardstock. And I'm going to grab regular foil. Maybe I grabbed the wrong one. This is Mandarin Slice from Crafty Krita. This is toner foil. I've turned the heat up to five because I am trying to stick it to cardstock. Now I'm trying to think of all the stuff I did the other day. The other day I did everything in hot foil, right? All right, let's try this. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. It is a scrap that was on my desk. Okay, so these are the um, swatch sheets that they send you, and I keep mine, and I write the names of the foils, the colors. This is one of our favorites. So this is great that they send this. I don't know of any other company that does that. That way I can go through and look at it and make sure I like the way it's going to foil before I use it. And then I know also in my inventory, if I need to order more, oh, that was this color. Because you don't always keep the sticker on the packages. I'm going to run this. Ooh, that's hot. That is hot. Oh, where's my uh, thingy? Let's see how hot it is. Ooh, sorry. Okay, so it's like 120 degrees on setting five. It's over 120 degrees. 
I'm setting five. Let's back it back down. I like the three better. It's normally where I, okay, let's see if this worked any different this time. Okay, see how that popped right off? <laughs> That's toner foil. Toner foil isn't going to stick unless you give it something to stick to. This should have stuck on here. All right, there we get a little bit better indication. Come on, it's hard to get it off. So hot foil, because there's an adhesive built in here, you can see how there's a residue. Let me pull it into view here. That's how you know if it's hot foil or toner foil. Toner foil did nothing, because toner foil said, I don't know what you want me to stick to. There's nothing for me to stick to. Where hot foil has an adhesive built into it. So hot foil, and that's how we use those metal plates. The metal plates can push down on that and it will stick. So that's how you test whether you have hot foil or not. If you have any of this residue, that is hot foiling, okay? Um, DGM says, can I use hot foil in a Spellbinders glimmer machine or do I need to use their foil only? So hot foil is going to be Spellbinders, Gemini foil press, We Are Memory Keepers foil quill, and also the Cricut foil, and you can use any of those in any of those hot foil machines. You do not want to use hot foil in what we're doing here. Okay, so I wanted to test these out. These are all thank you sentiments. I'm going to do them all in one color, I think. And because this is a thicker cardstock, I am going to increase my uh, heat to five because this is super thick, heavy cardstock. I am going to use, where's that dark blue at? Okay, this is called Deep Sea Blue. It's one of my favorite colors. This is, this one's hard to come by. You don't see this color very often. Okay, you want to cut your foil to just about the same size as what you need. You don't really want too much excess foil. And keep in mind, too, that foil shrinks as it goes through your machine because as it sticks down, um, I would say this is probably 100 pounds. It's very thick. This is from Simon Says Stamp. I'm not happy with how small the print is. We're going to dusty, dusty. We always dusty, dusty the back of our foil and what we're foiling. That's what keeps the black specks away. Now, if you have wrinkling in your foiling, I have a little wrinkling here. That's not going to hurt anything. Just make sure you try to smooth it out. Okay. If you have too much foil, it's going to cause a problem. And if you have too much heat, it will cause your foil to wrinkle. So there is some practice involved. You might need a little foiling notebook to write down when you try something. Oh, it does match my nails. I, I did Ford colors because, again, I'm doing the for, for Ford next week. I work for Ford, so... Next week, we'll be in Florida, so I thought it'd be nice to do the Ford colors to show my team spirit. It's not too hot with this cardstock, Bernie. This is very thick cardstock. This is not paper. It is cardstock. This is 100 pounds. I'm going to back this back down to three. Let that, and it will blink as it cools down and it will stay solid green when it's uh, ready. We want to let this cool down. If you try to reveal this right away, you're not giving the foil enough time to cool down and adhere to the toner print. And I want you guys to ask questions. If you're doing foiling and you're having problems, I want to try to help you out here. So don't be afraid. If you're thinking the question, somebody else is thinking the question. So go ahead and ask away. Tracy doesn't have this color. It is called Deep Sea Blue, and it is a nice dark royal blue. Okay, and just as I suspected. So you guys can't see, I'll show you. 
Um, this did not foil very well. It's okay. Like the average person is not going to notice, but I kind of knew that was going to happen because number one, this cardstock is too thick. And number two, the lines are too fine. So when I show you the foil, this is how you can really tell. Let me grab a darker. You see splotches in the foil and that's how you can tell. So I can still use these, and like I said, most people are not going to notice. I suspected that when I bought these. Can you see how there is still foil? Now you can see it. See how that foil is not a clean transfer? Okay, that's going to happen because the print is too small. I hate to break it to you, but font matters. And when the font is not thick enough for the toner to lay down and stick to, um, you're going to have uneven foiling. Hi, Andrea. So you can see that, right? So on this, and I, I wish they would not advertise this as foiling. I get it, foiling's hot and everybody's trying to sell foil. You can use this as a regular you know, just fonts. The toner print on there is fine to use as a regular font, but I wish they had not advertised this as foil fonts because it's not, it's not, it's not good. And I suspected that because of the size of the font. It's very small and because the paper is very thick. So I am going to say I don't recommend purchasing these unless you're going to use them without foiling them. Can you see where all the black spots are? Okay, I see some questions coming through. Let me see if I can answer them. Okay. Which foil do I use when I want to use double-sided tape? Fancy, that's a great question. You can use any foil you want for double-sided tape. So the great thing about foil is if you're not going to be using heat, for example, the Deco Foil Duo Gel or um, double-sided tape or glue, we use a glue pen. So we have this Kuretake Zig two-way glue pen. It goes on blue and then it will dry clear once it's done uh, or tape. Ooh, I found gummies. Let me find some tape. Looking for tape, not gummies. And tape is a really great alternative that I think a lot of people forget when they're foiling because it's a really cool, easy accent. If you have a plaid background that you've stamped out and you want to add some gold accents, put a little bit of skinny tape on there. I know I have some. I just showed it to you guys the other day. Here it is. So here is some Suk Wang tape, also known as Be Creative tape, also known as Double Stick tape. Okay, it comes in a lot of different size rolls. So I think this is like 1 16th, 1 8th, and then 1 inch, and then I also have 4 inches. Um, you can pick these up at the stamp show. Uh, if you can't get to the stamp show, I believe Tesla Crafts offers it. Um, Gary Berlin offers it. You can pretty much pick it up anywhere. So here I'm just going to take... I love using tape as an accent because we often forget about it. This is one of the basics of card making that we have. Everybody has some kind of double-sided tape. Um, it's great for ribbons. It's great for foiling. It's great for glitter. I'm just going to burnish that down, make sure it's stuck on there real well. And this glue is almost dry, so I'm going to show you the glue too. Okay, so, but I still always recommend keeping your toner foil separate from your regular foil. So this was the hot foil we used earlier. So with tape, it doesn't matter. Tape is just going to pull up that foil off of the carrier sheet. You don't need any heat. Okay, that's really pretty. I have this little thing of glue over here. If you want to write out someone's name, you use the glue pen. If you make a mistake, there's the glue pen. 
Here is the Crafty Krita foil. This is toner foil. So when it comes to non-heat methods, you can use any foil that you have. Deco Foil Duo Gel is great if you want to do um, through stencils. You, if you have Texture Paste Transparent Gloss from Ranger, that's another option. They're inexpensive, and you can use them with any of your stencils that you have. And we have the glue over here. So these are non-heat ways that you can add foil to your projects. So I used a hot foil and I used a toner foil. Just stuck on my desk here. So you can see both of them look great. They both work fine. There's no leftover residue or anything like you have with glitter. And here it is using it with the Zig 2-Way glue pen. So you can do non heat methods of using foil. Any foil you have will work with that, okay? All right, I saw another question on there. How do I use the toner sheets that are solid black? That's a great question too, Lynn. So there's two ways you can use those toner sheets. I will show you those, hold on. And if I miss questions, um, ping me, you guys, so I can see them. Okay, so um, let me grab my toner sheets. Well, Okay, there's two companies that I recommend for toner sheets. The two companies that I recommend are, of course, Crafty Krita. They have full toner sheets. They have these slimline toner sheets and Deco Foil. And Deco Foil makes two kinds. They make um, an adhesive kind and a non-adhesive kind. Now, I did a video comparing these before. There's a third company that sells toner sheets. I will not recommend that company. I tried them out. She basically prints them herself. And she prints them on too thick of cardstock. And when they're too thick, they don't work well. So these are the non-adhesive ones from Deco Foil. They're very thin, okay? Um, cost for value, they're not the best. You do get a full eight and a half by 11 sheet, but you only get three or four sheets in here and they're super thin. If you get the ones with the adhesive, which are a little thicker, and you would use these for die cuts, um, they're, a little bit, you get like one less sheet. So if you get four here, you only get three there or something like that. They're flimsy, yes, and expensive exactly like T says. So I am gonna recommend if you're already shopping at Crafty Krita, Crafty Krita gives you 16 of these in their slim line. And I like to use them two ways. Number one, die cutting. If you have um, die cutting that you want to foil. I recommend foiling first and then die cutting. In fact, let's use that new foil they just sent. Okay, Julie asked a great question. Make sure I get back to that about using a color laser printer. And that is a question I get asked all the time. So I am glad that you asked that, Julie. All right, so I'm going to save this for my, my sample page. So I always use these for my testing. When I do my little, um, and this is how you do that. 
They send you the swatches. They send you more than enough swatches too. Okay. And we're going to write down my favorite new pen. The name of this is Golden Bling. And the code is F0061. So I cut the little sticker off the end. Oh, I kind of butchered it. You want a good pair of foil only scissors. I use a rotary cutter or these scissors. These are my foil only scissors. Everybody in the house knows if you touch these scissors, you will die. These are my foil scissors. They're very special. Okay, and we're always gonna dusty, dusty. And we always dust side, the back, the ugly side of the foil. And we always dust the toner where we want the foil to stick. Okay. And I have my machine on three and we feed the folded edge in, not the open edge. So that's what I do with the end pieces. Now I want to, okay, because the words go this way, I'm gonna foil this whole sheet. So when you are die cutting, you wanna make sure that you foil first and then die cut. What I found is if you die cut and then foil, because of the pressure on the edge of the dies, it doesn't always foil well. So I found for me, it's easier to foil and then die cut. You'll notice that I always put everything back in the bags because dust is the enemy. I don't want dog hair, dust, glitter, embossing powders, any of those things touching my stuff. So I will always be putting it away and I will constantly be like dusting things off, okay? So for this piece, this is cooling down now. We'll grab another one of these. You get a more finished edge, correct. So I'm gonna dust this off. This is the deco foil one. This is the Crafty Krita foil. So this is a piece that I would want to use as a background or I'd want to die cut from it. I love this, these words. That is so original, have not seen that yet. Okay, we're gonna feed that in there. Okay, and then this one, I'm actually going to grab a slim line and I'll show you how we use waste foil. Remember the other day we did videos on waste foiling and everybody said, oh, I'm gonna go buy the Pink Fresh Studio metal plate so I can foil my waste foil and you're all gonna have gray hair and be frustrated and angry and you're all gonna call me and say, Nancy, it doesn't work. And I'm gonna say, told ya, just to use toner sheets, but nobody listens to me. So this, I like using these for waste foil. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna foil one of your projects. I'm gonna do this guy here. I'm going to do this in I'm going to use the do I want to use the blue part about foiling, picking the color you want. All right, I'm gonna use this one, Sparkle Gold. Okay, 
So this one is called Sparkle Gold. Okay, and I want it about the same size. And this is where I would normally have my rotary trimmer out and I would just slice it. That's okay. Okay, and now on this one I do like to use my little longer folders. You just get the big ones and you can cut these down if you can't find these thin ones. And we're gonna dusty, dusty. And dusty, dusty. You can get the dusty, dusty brushes in my Amazon shop. I think it's three for $10 right now. So you have one for you and one for your friend. Or one for you and one for when you lose one. Okay, so we're going to put this through. What is that? That's a black spot. Okay, it's on my sheet here. Okay. So two ways you can use toner sheets. One, if you want to make backgrounds or do die cutting, which is what we've done here. So this is just... No, what is this? Oh, this was my swatch. Okay, so now my swatch is ready. Okay, that's pretty easy. And it goes in with the rest of my swatches. Okay, that's pretty easy. This is the one I did, the full toner sheet. So now if I wanted a toner sheet background, I have a full background. I have two little dust spots there. And this is what dust looks like when you don't dusty dusty well. Do you see the little black spot there and there? But that's pretty good. We're not gonna complain about that. And now I can die cut what I wanna die cut out of here. Ooh. Ooh, I know what we're going to die cut out of here. Let's see if this works. The extra folders you can get off my scrapbook.com link. And my scrapbook.com link, um, you can get two or the smaller ones for $4.74. Or you can get um, the big ones from Joann's. But scrapbook.com usually carries them. Ready to see? Oh, this is cool. Look at all of that beauty. And if somebody is keen, they will read that it says genuine and original on the on the foil itself. So foil first, then die cut, okay? So that's what the full toner sheets are for. The other thing I like to have full toner sheets for is foiling the waste. And a lot of times you guys say, well, what do I do with this foil? Don't throw it out. So once you're done foiling your project, I did not do a good job with this one, but you can see that it's foiled there. And I'm gonna guess because my machine is probably too hot at this point. You're gonna have this leftover waste foil. You're gonna take this leftover foil, dusty, dusty, and I can tell my machine's too hot. One, it's been running for an hour, but two, do you see the slight wrinkling? That is an indication that your machine is too hot. When you start to see wrinkling in your machine, you have, you ha or in your foil, you need to turn, turn it down a little bit. Okay, so I'm actually gonna crank this baby down to two. And that does happen because these machines are on the whole time. Okay, now I'm gonna take the full toner sheet, dusty, dusty again. But I'm gonna show you how to fix those black spots too, so don't worry. I very rarely throw anything foiling away because I can usually fix it and I'll show you guys how to fix it. I wanna make sure this is all straight. And 
And that's why I do these videos so you guys can see. It's not always perfect. You're gonna have little boo-boos along the way, but we're gonna learn together and we're gonna fix it together. Okay, somebody asked a question while that's going through about laser printers, about using a color laser printer versus a black and white laser printer. So here's the simple answer to that. Your foil does not have eyes. The foil cannot see whether you have put it on colored toner or black and white toner. So the foil, it does not matter to the foil. It will stick to everything. So anything you print with a laser printer, the foil will stick to. However, black and white toner printers are going to give you the best results because the black is the densest color. So because it is the densest color versus yellow, you're going to have better foil adhesion to the um, to the black and white than you are the colored, if that makes sense, okay? So that was a great question. Not sure if this is the, using color laser printer. Okay. If you want to do colored printer, um, now you see how this is more flat now because I turned my machine down to two, the wrinkles are gone, plus we have full toner here, we should have better adhesion this time. And that is flawless victory. When your toner, when your foil sheet comes off 100% clean like that, that's what you want, okay? Now, I did have a couple of areas here where, like, lady's head didn't get foiled here. It got overfoiled here. All I can do here now is take my toner pen and go back in. Well, not my toner pen. My glue. I can go in with this. I can go and touch up those areas. I don't even need to run heat in there. And refoil that this because it's white I can also ink blend this or use pan pastels on it foil first and then you can take a, a rag and wipe the ink blending off this is already done so one of two things I can do I can leave this exactly the way it is which I think I will it looks great um, just put a sentiment on here or I can actually go back in and toner this again so the black area here is com is exposed toner I can go in and foil it again but because of their high quality print you can see it's nice and shiny I don't need to foil this again but that's how you use toner sheets and that's how you get double foiling and we get into the infinite loop of foiling so I always recommend buying lots of toner sheets. Toner sheets are great because you can use up all of that foil. So now that piece of foil has been used two times. It has been used all the way down to just the edges. And I can even use these edges once this glue dries to go in and fix my little boo-boos there. The glue has to dry completely. But I can go fix my boo-boos with what's left on the edges here before I throw this out. Okay. So the two toner sheets, um, I have websites, links for scrapbook.com or ThermoWeb or Crafty Crita. If you're already placing an order with Crafty Crita, I would say Deco Foil. Buy the adhesive ones. They're a little bit thicker. Um, or just when you're ordering from Crafty Crita, get your, get your toner sheets from. They have the best value. Again, just like their toner um, prints, their foil art, their toner sheets are really good. Okay, so what else is someone asking here? Did I answer the laser printer question to make sense? So this butterfly, unfortunately, is sold out at most places, but it is the Tim Holtz 3D Impresslets. Uh, Nancy has ordered some to do a giveaway because I didn't realize how beautiful they were, so we may be adding that to our foiling giveaway, yes. Yes, I want to try to answer as many questions as I can for you guys because I want you to have good foiling. And you're going to have all of these wonderful people on YouTube showing you how these wonderful products to buy from them. But what they don't tell you is there is a small learning curve with foiling. It's really not that hard, but I want you guys to know the correct way to get the best out of your foil. There's another company that sells foil art um, products um, and... Uh, I just don't think that their demonstrations are very good or real and uh, brought that up before and so I want to make sure that you guys understand 
the best ways you're spending your money on these products to get the best quality of products, best value for your money, the best customer service, and to know how to use correctly what you're buying. And I'm always going to say use a mink over a laminator. If you don't have a mink machine, um, try to find one. I know they're expensive. I know they're hard to find. As far as I know, I don't think they're being discontinued. I just think it's a supply issue right now with the computer chips, the microchips. Um, but Blix has them. I have a Blick website you can check out. I think it's $65 for the mini mink. Uh, if you want Big Mama mink, I'm going to recommend checking out Joann's. Um, I don't know if you can use a coupon or not at Joann's. No, the butterflies were sold out at scrapbook.com, which is they sent me an email saying they were in supply, and I think I got two of them. So, Fancy asked a great question. On the sentiment sheet, would I reuse this foil? My answer is no. If a foil, if it came out great and perfect like this one did, yes, I would look it. I would use it again. But because this came out not very good, I would not reuse this one, honestly. There's too many missed spots. Uh, it's too grungy looking. And when I do foiling, I don't want my foiling to be grungy looking. I want my foil to be the opposite of grungy looking. I want my foil to be pristine, perfect, smooth, shiny. Um, you know, it's total opposite from grunge. Not saying I don't like grungy. I do like grungy. But when you are coming into doing foiling, ideally, it should be very smooth. It should be like this. The hot foil process, you need some kind of dye looking plate to get the foil to stick. Okay, so Daisy, yes, that is a completely different system. So hot foiling is a different company. It's a different foiling system. It's a complete, and I have three videos we just did. So hot foiling is going to be using Spellbinders Glimmer, Gemini Foil Press, Couture Creations Go Press and Foil Machine. You have to use different foils. You cannot use these foils that I'm showing you today. You cannot use a mink machine. And you, it is required to buy special dye. They are hot foil stamps. They don't cut. All they do is press into the foil. And that is a completely different system. It is more expensive, in my opinion. There is a bigger learning curve, in my opinion. You do get some beautiful designs out of them. But I will always say that toner foiling, which is what we're doing today, is going to be cheaper. It's going to be easier. And uh, it's going to give you better results most times than hot foiling, uh, depending on what you're doing. So it's personal preference on what you want to make, what you want to do, but they're two different systems. This is toner foiling, not to be confused with hot foiling. Yep, that's a great question. I guess get that asked all the time. Yes, laser printer and laminator. Now the laminator, they're not all the same. Some laminators are inexpensive, and I've shown two videos with $25 laminators that work okay. They're not 100%, but they work okay for 25 bucks. Always going to recommend a mink, a mini mink, or a large mink. You do not need to buy a $70 laminator. Please don't buy that $70 laminator. It is a waste of money, you guys. It really is. For $75, you can buy the mink. Yes, Julie. So color toner would show up with clear foil. Yep. Yep. Yes, Crafty Critter has some beautiful clear foils. Let's bring some of those into play here. You guys are asking very relevant questions. I love this. Keep asking. Admins, if I'm missing anything, ping me. I'm trying to be good today and stay on top of the comments. All right, I really want to play with these sunglasses because they're just super cool. Uh, these, I'm going to say, are not FSC approved and uh, not going to be foiling any more of those. <laughs> Bernie, that's his job. He has to sell his product. He designs them, he gets paid for them, and he sells them, right? 
I do like to show you guys stuff, but a lot of you guys have a lot of these things already in your stash. So I want to show you what's new and what's coming out. Um, if you can afford and you have an interest in them, certainly get them. I'm not judging anybody that does or doesn't buy them. Um, if you cannot and you are just watching to watch to have a good time, I'm okay with that too. I always say use what you have. Some people are starting to dip their toe into foiling. Some people still want to learn a little bit more about it. And uh, so whatever you want to do, whatever you want to get out of this program is fine by me. I'm going to reuse this leftover foil that we have. Well, not leftover. It's the X side piece of that gold foil. And then I'm going to use the clear foil up here. Okay, which the clear foil is the toughest to learn. It does take a minute. This one is called Hologram Brittle. Say hi. My, my man child is here. Say hello. Come out. <laughs> okay so you always want to make sure that you put the right side down and if you guys have never seen me use this clear foil this clear foil is amazing because you can use it over and over and over again it's some kind of um some kind of special polymer in this foil that you can use it several times. You guys, I have used this in resin projects as well. I probably shouldn't say that. Oh, it is so cool. It is. It's really cool. Okay. So, I have this face down. I need to do dusty, dusty. I wear my sunglasses at night. You guys, I'm like an 80s music junkie. My music's all over the place. I'm listening to Old Dominion just came out with a new CD. Florida Georgia Line just came out with a new CD. I got those two. I got Justin Bieber. I got 80s. Nancy listens to everything. I got 90s rock. All right, so we're going to put these two through at the same time. I have a little extra hanging here, so I am going to cut that off. Yes, daughter. Are you going to bed? Can somebody give me a Sprite, please, before they go up? I'm thirsty. It's hot down here. Thank you. Okay. Here we go. Oh, I'm going to change this back to three. We should be okay. We should be okay. Crafty Credit prints their foil art. High quality toner, high quality paper, great foils. What was it? Over 65 different styles now. Um, and again, I'm not trying to do a full unboxing of everything they sent me, you guys. I will do another video when I come back from Florida on that. I just want to answer the questions that you guys have had. You guys have had great questions. You can use any foil on uh, glue or tape. What do you use your toner sheets for? You can die cut with them or you can foil your waist. Um, there is substantial differences between hot foiling and toner foiling. So you guys really need to understand that is completely different. You cannot cross those two worlds. They are completely different. The only thing that's the same is the word foil. <laughs> Other than that, everything else is different. Um... There is a difference between black and white toner printed images and color toner printed images. Uh, the code FSC05 is always good. That is a code that they always give us for the Foiling Snobs Club. Thank you. Um, and just remember when you Convert your dollars from Australian dollars to U.S. dollars. Uh, it is usually a little bit cheaper, and they do ship all over the world. And for those of you that are in the U.S., um, Crafty Crit is in Australia. Those of you that are in the U.S., we have another supplier, um, which is H&H. &H, but H&H &H is great on pricing, but usually they are low on stock. So if you are looking for foil and you, you really want to make sure you're going to get them, Crafty Krita is going to be your best bet. Uh, I do like H&H, &H, but they do run out of stock very quickly, especially when Nancy posts in the FSC that H&H &H is back in stock. Within two days, they're sold out of everything. <laughs> I 
I did see a question earlier, is thick paper better? No. I would say 80 pound is probably the sweet spot when it comes to foiling. Anything thicker than 80 pound, I think you're getting too heavy, which is why porous papers like black and colored papers don't work as well because they're so porous, it's so thick that it's hard for the foil to stick to it because the, the toner does, the toner soaks in instead of sitting on top. They're pretty quick. I would say you would have your package within three weeks, I would say on average. These are the coolest, blingiest sunglasses ever. Whoa, buddy. Let's see what, and now I can save this and I can use this on a toner sheet. So now on a toner sheet, I would have these awesome gold rims and then I could double foil the center with another color foil. Night, Trace. All right, here we go. Oh my gosh, I love the clear foil. It's so cool. Okay, hold on. I always have to write what is the top of my foil. So my little secret is I put a letter B on it because if I flip it over, then I know it's backwards. So I know that this is the top. So I can, re can you guys see that that foil is still there? So I can reuse this sheet over and over and over again for about four or five times before it starts to fade out. But I gotta show you guys these sunglasses. Isn't that cool? It's rad, dude. <laughs> The clear foil would look great with the gold waste. That is cool. Yeah. If I did those two on a toner sheet. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. What other question you guys got? Did, let me go back and read the comments real quick. You guys are really doing great here. I do encourage you to join the Foiling Snobs Club because we do have a wonderful group of people that have really taken a lot of time to learn about foiling and really want to help you guys learn. Um, there isn't anybody in there that is mean or snotty. Um, I will say that um, most of them have watched most of my videos. So if I can't tell you the video, they can. I have a wonderful team of admins that also helps out. So Stacy, Tracy, Tracy, and Chow are also there to help you out. Um, thank you, T. Yep. So a couple of different places you guys can go to. The clear foil, I have only found toner clear foil at Crafty Critta. Now we have clear hot foil from Blue Bonnet, which if you've watched Lisa at Local King Rubber Stamps, that's what she's been using. Um, and again, hot foil is a different video. We did the hot foil video the other night and I used all, uh, all blue bonnet hot foils on, on the hot foiling that I was doing the other night with the girls with the butterflies. So that is who I would recommend for hot foiling is blue bonnet. She's based out of Texas, but for toner foiling, I would say crafty Krita is going to have your foil art. They're going to have your foils, your toner sheets, your DIY toner printed sheets. If you want to do it yourself at home, they have everything. Ooh, orange or rainbow. Yes. I'm not sure about pre-foiled cardstock. If craft cardstock is okay to laser print on. So Daisy, I would say try it. That's all I can say to you. Generally, no. Um, anything that is super porous... Uh, or is meant to accept dye. So when you have colored papers like red, black, um, you know, they, they're, they're accepting a dye. They do not uh, accept toner very well. The toner needs to sit on top. When it sits on top, then the foil can stick to it, right? So with colored paper, 
that color paper is dyed. It's dyed to be whatever color you want it to be. So it's very porous. So when it's very porous, the toner doesn't sit on top. So if the toner doesn't sit on top, it's very difficult for it to foil. So I can say try it, but generally the results are not as smooth or as good as white cardstock is. And it needs to be a coated white cardstock. So that's why we recommend Hamilco or Crafty Krita for, for if you're going to print your own. Um, Pre-toner sheets, I would say there is, um, a couple of companies I like. I meant to do a video for you guys and I just didn't get around to it, but you can buy, these are... This one's from Tonic. We've used um, Crafters. This is Crafters Companion. This one's from Tonic. Um, this company, it doesn't work very good. Uh, which one is this? This one's Sizzix. So there are a lot of companies, and this is hot foiled. There are a lot of companies that you can print on foiled cardstock. And I wanted to do this video for you guys last year, and I don't think I got around to it. But I will do some testing for you guys where if you want to buy and use foil cardstock to foil on, and it can be done, I will test out some companies and tell you which companies work. Because it's not always going to work. Because what happens is this paper is also coated, obviously, in order to have that holographic look. And once you run it through a laser printer, one, is the toner going to stick to it and stay on it? And two, is the heat going to affect it? And then when you run it through the mink, same thing, is the heat going to affect it? And I can tell you this one gets really cr cloudy and ugly and is kind of useless to foil on. I think I had some luck with the Crafter's Companion one. I have not tried the Tonic or the Sizzix yet to see if I can, but I will put that on my experiment list for you guys for printing. The same thing with vellum. I've done lots of videos on vellum. Uh, honestly, the cheaper the vellum, the better. Um, pearlescent cardstock works pretty good. The Sizzix brand works really good. So those of you that are trying to print professional looking cards, uh, there are other card stocks you can use but usually smoother paper is better photo paper is 50 50 the photo paper sometimes works out great sometimes you get over foiling on the photo paper so again just depends on the brand sticker paper is a very tough one everybody asks me about sticker paper i honestly do not waste my time with sticker paper because sticker paper is it goes to the printer fine but it honestly melts when it goes through the mink even at low settings and when it melts you get over foiling because the foil sticks to the sticker paper which is melting uh, so I don't like to do sticker paper if anybody wants to do a sticker paper experiment you certainly can uh, and and then I will buy some sticker paper but I don't feel like buying 10 brands of sticker paper to experiment with the only thing I can say is try it yourself and let us know the results Can you foil over foil like putting clear foil over the gold foil? No. Once the foil has stuck, that's a great question. Once the foil has covered the toner area, this is now protected by foil and you can no longer foil over this. So I can't foil over these. However, this one, the foil is on the outside. The foil has not stuck to the inside. So I can now run another piece of foil on top of this wherever this black area is exposed, because this is a toner sheet, and I can double foil this. So if the toner has not been um, foiled, you can foil over it. But once it's been foiled over, even though you can see the toner, this toner is now protected, you cannot foil over it. That is an excellent question. Does the clear foil work the same way with adhesive? Yes, fancy. You can do the, the tape and the glue with the clear foil as well. Yep. Can we still fix the spots lines that's missing from the first toner foil? Yeah. So what you would do is you would take your little glue pen, um, like I did, and did I did that? Is that dry? I think I lifted it when I 
after that. And I do recommend the zig. You can get it as super fine as well. But when you have a mistake where, I don't know what this lady's head's supposed to look like. Cut it off. It over. I overfoiled her. Well, let me find an area that's that's not foiled that should be foiled. But you would basically just go through. And you take your glue pen and you touch up any of these areas that are still black. You can try to run it through and foil it again. In my opinion, that doesn't always work. You just get kind of frustrated with it. But you can take this glue pen and touch up anywhere. You're going to let that dry. Once it's completely dry, you're going to go in and touch the touch the glue and it will stick so my nails are done with foil you guys so what they did is they did a, a sticky clear coat they dried it for like 15 seconds and then they went in with foil and stuck that on and then clear coat over top of it so you can use foiling on any projects you have at home um gold flakes I, I will not buy gold flakes. I do not own gold flakes because I've seen too many nightmare stories of gold flakes. I don't need to buy gold flakes. If I have something like this and I want to do like a border, any kind of edging, I don't need to buy gold flakes. I have foil. This is super sticky tape, super sticky. I have used foil in alcohol ink projects. You guys have seen me do that. So you guys get the idea. I mean, it looks like foiled flakes, right? And I just used a couple different colors of foil. And you would keep doing this until you got it to the consistent you like. And once you're done, then you can take your embossing buddy and powder over this. And then it won't be sticky anymore and your foiling will show through. And after you do it a couple times, it'll be pretty much be covered in foil and there won't be any stickiness left. So you don't always need heat to do foiling, but it does help. What other questions do you guys have? Is there a way to test if six by six paper pads are black and white can be foiled or you just have to try it? You got to try it, Donna. Uh, Stacy and I did a video a few months back where we tested out a whole bunch. Uh, I find if it is super black print and you can feel that it's raised, normally most commercially printed papers are laser, but that's not always the case. So you just got to try to test it.
Yeah, and if they are double-sided, T brings up a good point. Make sure you cover the back. Like Altenu is a great one. Yeah, Jerry, you could do that. You could do clear foil over it. Great idea. Thank you, JSN. Yeah, the CP ones did not. They're very grungy. Mm -hmm. Altenew does. Yes, Abraham, the Altenew papers do foil. And that's why I'm saying there's a lot of companies that try to market to foiling and all it is is laser printed. Don't fall into that trap and say, oh, I have to buy that and have to foil it. You don't always have to foil it. And also, just because it doesn't say foil on it doesn't mean you can't foil it. You just kind of have to try it out. So when you have, here, I'll show you a piece of the Altenew. Let me turn this back on. It's getting quite toasty in here. I will show you. Let me grab it. Okay, these are the companies that we tested. I can't find my Altenu. It's not in front of me right now. Okay, so we did the Catherine Pooler um, Slimline Little Black Dress. It is black and white. It is laser toner, but it's just because this is a thicker cardstock. Um, it didn't want to foil as smoothly. So do not recommend this one. Uh, this is a company where I bought, this is old, Boxer Scrapbook Productions, classic black and white paper pack, did not foil. Bow Bunny, black and white, Tuxedos and Tiaras collection, um, did not foil. Okay. Um, and then this is recollections elegance um because it's printed here did not foil the companies that did work were all to new and this one which is paper rose and i'll show you what they mean by double-sided is this paper has double print okay so you have a front and a back side 
So if you are going to foil this, and I put this in a toner sheet, it's going to get hot, and that toner is going to get sticky, and it's going to stick to my toner sheet. To avoid that, this is called Lava Flow, which is a beautiful, beautiful red holographic foil. This design is very unique. It looks like lava. Okay, so again, to protect that backside, there are two things you can do. One, you can put a piece of paper back there, but then it will stick to your paper. So I'm gonna make sure my foiling side looks pretty here. Okay. Now, I can decide to double foil this and foil both sides and see which one I like better, but that would be a waste of foil. So what you would do here is you would take an old piece of foil, like this one, and you would put it colored side down. I don't wanna put it like this because I don't want the foil to stick to it, but I would put it colored side down. As long as that is covered, it will not stick. colored side down. So literally just grab those two pieces that would have gone in the trash. Those are colored side down and my pretty side is covered by red foil. And now I'm going to cover this and run this through. I have a little excess foil on the end there. You don't want excess foil hanging off the edges because if it hangs off the edges and it gets caught up in your mink, it's going to cause your foil to get eaten. Um, Altenew is a great one and this paper rose, this I got from scrapbook.com. This is also made in Australia. This is a great paper too. fascist book anymore. <laughs> I love it. Okay, so we always want to let this cool down. Yes, Stacy's doing a video that's, um, she has a video that's make your own toner sheets on Stacy's channel. Okay, so once this cools down, you'll notice there's no toner on my transfer sheet. There's no foil on the back side here because we only use the clear part, so there's no foil stuck on here. So if I wanted to go back in and foil this, I could, but really it's just designed not to mess up my toner sheet. And now this side is the side I wanted foil, so let's see how well I did. That's pretty stinking cool. You can see all the little details of the lava in there. Lava, lava. Now, again, if you're using thicker cardstock, this is a little thicker, you should raise your heat to 405. I probably could have got a little bit better coverage on this, but this is not too bad. This is, this is okay. I have full coverage. I don't have... Um, very many spots. There are a few micro spots, but I would definitely use this. Four or five would have probably been a better heat sitting, again, because this is thicker cardstock. But I think that looks pretty cool with that lava foil in there. And once it's foiled, it's foiled. You cannot go back in. Now, we have this waste foil that we could go in and put that on a toner sheet and use it. And then double foil it with some gold if you wanted to. So there's a lot of possibilities with foil. You have to decide, you know, how invested you want to get into the machines that you want to get into the foils. Once you have the machines, the foils are not that expensive and you just buy a couple at a time. You don't need to go out and buy 20 colors of foil. Think about 
how you're going to use them, in what capacity, you know, if you're going to use them for birthdays, I always recommend like rainbow foil. If you're going to do holiday, then you want, you know, red, green, silver, um, gold. If you're doing Hanukkah, you want silver and blue. If you're going to be doing uh, New Year's, probably silver and gold. Um, you know, things like that. And buy them seasonally, a couple rolls at a time. But as far as value goes, Crafty Crit is amazing value. If you don't have a laser printer, you don't need one. They make this beautiful foil art. They make um, this great foil. Um, and you can try it out. And you can start off, you can start off with a $25 laminator. It's personal preference, but I would recommend if you're going to invest, um, try the mink. Uh, the mink is, like I said, a mini mink is $65 in the U.S. I know it is more expensive when you are outside the country. I understand that. Um, but I'm just saying if you want the best results. Don't forget to dusty dusty. This is probably the easiest overlooked process of foiling is to dust your foil and your paper um, using the right printer settings using the right paper if you're going to get really heavily invested in this you want to buy a good black and white laser printer you want to buy good quality paper and of course you want to invest in good foils all right all right, any other questions you guys and a lot of you have this stuff at home you just got to get out and practice. There is a learning curve. You're going to have mistakes. It's okay. Yeah, the full size mink, I don't think you, the full size mink, I think is the only one that you can get in uh, other countries, like in Canada and UK. Now, if you have a U.S., mailing address. I have not tried this, so I cannot honestly speak to the full point of this, but I understand that Amazon and Walmart have UK and US plugs of the mink. I don't know if they're full or mini minks, but if you have somebody in the US that could ship it, you may be able to order it cheaper in the US and have somebody ship it to you in Australia or UK. Oh, that does look pretty on there, doesn't it? I can make a cute little card with that, huh? All right, any other question, you guys? I did not need to be on here for two hours. <laughs> but if I helped somebody learn a little bit more about foiling, or if I helped you save some money from buying inferior products. Um, and again, I know that a lot of people are jumping on the foiling bandwagon. I would like to say, you know, that I appreciate you guys supporting me and telling those folks, hey, go watch Nancy's channel on foiling. I do a lot of toner foiling. I do a lot of hot foiling. I own three mink machines. I own one, two hot foiling machines. I did have three hot foiling machines, four actually. I've narrowed it down to two hot foiling machines, but I have tried every possible product out on the market when it comes to foiling. I've done a lot of homework and a lot of research for myself and for you guys. I started off with Creative Vision Stamps and my friend Laura, who has now retired. So those of you guys asking me, you know, where's Creative Vision Stamps? Creative Vision Stamps has retired. So the next best thing that we found for for foiling, actually, I'm, I'm going to say Crafty Crit has offered us a little bit more because Crafty Crit gives us 65 colors of foil. They give us full toner sheets as well as slimline toner sheets. They have their own toner printed paper that you can print at home with a laser printer. And they have countless numbers of foil art for all occasions, including sentiments. And they've even worked with you guys with your die cutting machines and they have SVGs that you can cut out your foiled artwork. So they really have tried hard in the last two years to make sure that they are addressing the needs in the foiling community. And I really appreciate that. Plus they have amazing customer service. And yes, I know they're in Australia, but it is worth it, you guys. It really is can't use usa mink in australia different types of voltage yes they have uk and australian plugs you guys so you need to make sure you're getting the right one yep yes and a discount code fsc05 
Yeah, and yes, I know, unfortunately, shipping has been a pain. That is not the fault of these companies, these small companies. You guys know I'm always trying to support them. Um, speaking of, the Ink Pad in New York City is celebrating her 23-year anniversary, so she has 23% off. You can go on her website and shop, or you can actually do a FaceTime Zoom call with her, and she will walk you through the shop and help you pick out things, which is kind of cool. So try to support these small companies. As I said before, H&H &H is a small company, family-owned business. They do heat transfer vinyl. They do Oracle vinyl. They do um, textile foil. So they weren't meant to get into paper crafting. I stumbled upon them. Um, we did a lot of research, a lot of companies. There are a lot of companies out there that sell textile foil. But I don't think you should spend $20 on a roll if you can get it for half that. And again... The reason Crafty Krita is our go-to is because they do ship all over the world. We understand not everybody's in the U.S. A lot of you guys are in Australia, U.K., Canada. And that's why we found Crafty Krita to be our international partner and help out with this. Yeah, Carol says, she said, Crafty Krita always sends a handmade card and a sample. And I'm in Texas and I get my order in about two and a half weeks. Yeah, I think it's about two and a half, three weeks. Yeah. No, Nancy does not have time for a storefront. No, 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 no. Nancy works. I buy stuff or get stuff, and I share the results with you guys. And I have told you guys if it's garbage, not to buy it. And there's only so far one company that I was not happy, well, two companies that I am not happy with their products or and or customer service and or how they treat people. Um, on their design teams or other YouTubers or whatever. And I think you guys who have been with me a long time know who those two companies are. Other than that, it's a free country. It's your money. Spend it any way you want or don't spend it. It's up to you. I understand a budget. I live on a budget. I know it doesn't seem that way sometimes, but I do. Um, so, you know, I'm as curious as you guys are when something new comes out on the market. But if I can find a way to use what I have first... Stop it, Abraham. Um, I'm going to use what I have first. And that's why, you know, I'm very curious. I know someone on my team is going to end up buying that picket fence plate for hot boiling. But I, <laughs> I'm telling you guys, it's not worth the aggravation of trying to get this out, figure out the sandwich, and maybe you get good results. If you're going to do toner, waste foil, if you're going to do any waste foiling, toner or hot, just use the toner sheets. It's so much easier, and you know you're going to get good results. But I'll let them buy it. They can test it out. If they get it to work, then maybe I'll buy it. But I'm just saying, just use toner sheets, you guys. Oh, Pink Fresh Studios has the plate out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. You guys, I, I will, nope, not going to say. You guys will know when I don't show their products. I don't mention them. They will not be invited to Stamp Wars. Nope, 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 nope. Um, color laser printers, I mentioned earlier, you don't really need to invest in a color laser printer. You can just buy a black and white mono laser printer. If you wanted to do two-tone printing, I did start to go in this and forgot. In order to do color printer on your foil, and it's not impossible, people have done it. You basically have to have two printers or you have to print, you have to separate your layers. What I mean by that is... Let's say I wanted this to be uh, toner printed and then I wanted the frame to be color printed. What I'd have to do is print it twice. So the first thing I would need to do is toner or laser print the center, foil it. Then I need to feed this back through my printer and color print the outside. So you would have to separate your design into sections. Um, anything that's laser printed, the laser will, the foil will stick to. So if this is all, it doesn't matter what color laser print it is. If these were blue rims and black or red, and the foil is going to stick to it, the whole thing. Um, or what some people have done is they've used two printers. So they've laser printed this center and then 
inkjet printed the outside because anything that's printed with an inkjet printer, your color will be there. Honestly, it's a big pain in the butt. It takes a lot of finicking and um, getting your paper to line up perfectly. In case you guys did not know this, there is no way to get your paper to line up perfectly every single time. It takes a lot of fussing, okay? That's why when you see foil artists, they normally do everything in one one swoop. Very rarely will you see an artist that does multiple layers of foil or does multiple colors of foil because it's a lot of hard work. The third way you could do it, which is an easier way, is through certain kinds of software. I did have a sample here, but I may have used it. If you have a certain software, you can inkjet print with your inkjet printer and then go in with your foil quill let me see if I have my sample. And you can use your foil quill to print. Um, that's also a lot of work, but you could get it to do that. So is it possible to do? Yes. Are you going to see Nancy demonstrate that? No. Why? Because it's a big pain in the butt, takes a lot of time. I'm not worth all of that aggravation. When I go and do my crafting, I wanna get in and get out. Um, you can take your time to do that if you want to, uh, but it, it is a lot of work to fill something, print it. You basically have to print it a few times, foil it, use two different printers, and um, your alignment a lot of times is not going to work out. I don't have my foil quill sample here in front of me to show you guys. Can it be done? It can be done. Yes, but it's a pain. It honestly is. So I hope that answers your question. As far as a color laser printer, it doesn't matter if it's color laser printer or not, your foil is going to stick to it. So it's kind of a waste of using color laser printer. Just get a black and white laser printer. Scrapbooking Made Simple has the Tim Holtz 3D Butterfly in stock for over $11. That means you will not see it until next year. So I'm not going to recommend that. I would recommend scrapbook.com. I would recommend even, uh, cringes to say this, Simon Says Stamp. Um, I don't know if I'm supposed to give this code to you guys, but I'm going to give it to you. Don't tell them I did. I'll probably get in big trouble. Here you go. I don't shop very often from this company, so... Yeah, Karen, I have the cute I have the link for Blink and Blick, and that's why I recommend everybody go. So if you're gonna get a mini mink, I would say Blick is your best option right now. Not valid until October 1st, correct. I do not order from SMS, from Scrapbooking Made Simple. I know she's a small company. I know I always say support small companies. But if I have to wait three months for my order, that's too long. Correct, Diane says. You need to have software that overwrites the printer drivers and you can print multiple times. But you kind of have to know what you're doing right. You got to have a degree in like graphic design computers and stuff. Yes. Correct. Stacy makes a good point. If you are doing any kind of laminating and you want to use one machine, you need the full size mink for that. Now, if you're like me and you have three laminators in the house, you don't really need that. But if you want to buy one machine that laminates and foils, then you will need Big Mama Mink because the small mink little guy here will not fit an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. It only fits like a little six inch piece of paper. Well, Shelly, what she does is she doesn't order the products until you order it. So what she's doing is taking a pre-order from you and say 25 people order the butterfly. Then she will place her order for 25 butterflies. And then by the time she gets it, 
and catches up to unpacking and shipping those orders, it takes three months. So she's on a pre-order basis. She's not, she doesn't keep anything in stock, I don't believe, and that's why it takes so long. So, um, you know, where larger companies have stock and it's fulfilled faster for you, like scrapbooking made simple, I mean like scrapbook.com or like Simon Says Stamp, they already have them in stock. And so when they're, you know, when they're sending it to you, it's already in stock. All right, any other questions? Yeah, Tuesday morning used to have the minks on sale. You can't find them anymore. So let's not get people's hopes up on that. Well, that's because you're ordering from Stamp Timber. Stamp Timber is so. Let me explain what Stamp Timber is because there was a lot of confusion around this. So, Simon says Stamp hosts Stamp Timber every September. They do a partnership with these companies, designers, artists, whatever. Right? They are the ones that are. Um, promoting the product. They are the ones that are selling the product. They are the ones that are making the product. They are the ones shipping the product. So perfect example is the, I'll give you the, the kitchen sink stamps, stamp timber set. I want to know who got it. Who got it? Who didn't get it and kicks themselves for not getting it? Because Nancy's got an extra for a giveaway. We'll do that next month. But anyway, so this is not sold by Kitchen Sink Stamps. You can only get it from Simon Says Stamps. Kitchen Sink Stamps designed it, but you cannot buy this from Kitchen Sink Stamps. You can't, you have to go through Simon Says Stamp. It is manufactured by Simon Says Stamp. It is shipped by Simon Says Stamp. So you have some companies which were very big, well-known companies. Um, Kitchen Sink Stamps sold out within two days. Tim, uh, Tim Holt sold out in a day. Gina K sold out in a day. So I'm going to assume, and I don't know because I work there, but in being in business, we order as much as we think is going to sell. So based on last year's sales, if company A sold 100 stamp sets, then I probably will order 100 to 125 stamp sets. If company B is new and I don't know how they're going to sell, I may only order 50 of those stamp sets, okay? So some stamp companies I think sold out faster than others because of the design, because they were new, because of the YouTuber that promoted it, because we have an influence on them. So I think a lot of those things take into place. So companies that are well-known, for example, Tim Holtz, you know that's going to sell out quickly. Gina K, you know that's going to sell out quickly because those are big-name companies that everybody wants a piece of the pie. Because they're all limited edition, there is no sale, there is no coupons, there is no discount, there is no break. Okay, You order it, and you get it, and you pay the full shipping on it, or you miss out. That's how it goes. So the whole month of September, um, and Simon Says Stamp normally doesn't do deals anyway. They, they're a company that kind of sticks to their pricing. They don't have coupons. If they do a coupon, it's a small $5 coupon. They very rarely do any kind of free shipping. That's just how they always have been. But they have huge people supporting them as YouTubers. They have um, you know, Jennifer McGuire, Christina Warner, Nicole Spore. They have... Um, big name people supporting them so they don't have to give their products away. So if you are looking for a deal or a sale or a discount, you're not going to get it from Simon Says Stamp, okay? That is the price you pay to get a limited edition stamp set. And once it's sold out, it's gone. If you've missed it, you are not going to get it again unless you win it. If one, if we bought extras, and I did buy some, I do get a free one for being on Kitchen Sink Stamps design team, but I knew it was going to sell out, and I did buy a couple of extras, so I will be... Um, I will be doing giveaway. So, Melanie, if you did not get it and you want it, keep an eye out because I, I did buy a couple extras. I agree with you guys. I think there is an appeal to a limited edition, but also a downside to limited edition because 
if you're working or you're on a budget crunch right now, to spend $25 on a stamp set, that's not cheap. And I and that's the other thing. I don't think these companies set their pricing. I think that Simon Says Stamp set the pricing. And what I noticed when I was on their website is a lot of the stamp-only companies were like $15 to $20 on the stamps. And the ones that had dies, and I didn't get the dies for this one, but the dies were jacked up like $15. So if you wanted dies, you were paying $30 for the stamps and the dies. Um, but I will say my girls all ordered this. So we're going to be doing a stamp with me. So if you guys ordered this and you just need some help navigating through it, um, I believe I checked and all of us have two stamp sets that are similar. Nancy fashion. I can't find it. Oh, here it is. <clears throat> so if you did not get this stamp set, I will have a giveaway. I did order some. I paid for them with my own money. No discount. Full shipping and everything because I knew some of you guys wouldn't be able to get it. But secondly, you can order these stamps from Kitchen Sink Stamps. So I think we're going to try for World Card Making Day, October 2nd, I think. Girls, correct me. Um, if I'm wrong, but I think Saturday, October 2nd, World Card Making Day, we're going, we should all have this in, so if you guys got it, you guys should all have it. We're going to play with it. And if you don't have this set, I don't want you to feel bad because I get it. It's, it's, it, it's a limited edition. It's a lot of money. I want you to look into other options that you have. So one of the, the two other options that they would have is, um, Maria's on here is the oh different maria is um they have the and this is an old set it's been around for a very long time it's a classic set this is the three-step butterflies tracy used these on last uh week's mod squad challenge which is butterflies so this has a large butterfly it has a medium butterfly it has a smaller butterfly so a wonderful set if you don't have butterflies, this is a great set. And then the flower, this is called the Giant Sunflower Set. And so this one, I haven't even used mine yet. They actually have two sets. They have a bigger sunflower set, and then they have this smaller sunflower set. So this one, this sunflower, if you guys look, it's kind of similar to this flower, right? So it's a little different. So I wanted to say, if you got this great, please join us to do Stamp With Me. We want to have a good time with everybody. If you didn't get it, you can get these from Kitchen Sink Stamps. I have a link. We also have a discount code. You can get these from Kitchen Sink Stamps. You have plenty of time before Stamp With Me. Um, it is called Three Step Butterflies and giant sunflower or you if you probably already have these because like i said these have been out a while and we can play with these two and we can play with this so we can do all three together or whatever you have um but i wanted to explain that to you because like abraham told me he thought simon says stamp stamp timber was a giant sale like all these companies gave us a sale and it's the complete opposite <laughs> there's no sale uh there's no discount so if you missed out i bought a couple to do a giveaway on don't fret if you are semi-interested in doing stamp with me and you want to learn how to do layered stamping, the three-step butterflies is very pretty, very easy to do. So we have that and we have the giant sunflower. And keep in mind with kitchen sink stamps, they do offer you the SVG to cut everything out and the SVG is completely free when you purchase these stamps. They don't give you that when it comes to Simon Says Stamp. You had to buy the dies. She doesn't sell dies. So you can use your silhouette machine, Cricut machine, scan and cut machine. Um, just put it in your basket. It's free when you buy it. Now, if you did order this set and you want the SVGs, she will send you the SVGs for this set only. You just have to email her at Kitchen Sink Stamps um, if you did not get the dies. And that's only from, yeah, Kitchen Sink Stamps. 
I didn't think the app didn't work. Lynn, what are you talking about? What didn't work? Yeah, right. T says there's always scissors. I don't fussy cut. T likes the fussy cut. And I like when you guys ask me these questions because I forget that I'm kind of old and been doing this crafting thing for, you know, 15, 20 years now. And some of you guys are new to it. And some of you guys are new to these companies. And I forget that stuff. So please do ask me, hey, what does that mean? What does FSC mean? It means Foiling Snobs Club. What do you mean Foiling Snobs Club? I don't want to join a club with a bunch of snobs. We're really not snobs. It's a joke. We just like to have our foiling pretty perfect. So we teach you how to do that, you know. So I want to, you know, just go over those things with you. The link just posted, it didn't work. Hold on, let me click it. Okay, the one chow printed. <gasps> she put sneak peeks on there already? You guys. Well, if she can show sneak peeks, I can show sneak peeks. So Monday, they are having a new stamp release. So if you want to put these on your bucket list, let me show you what's coming out Monday. We do have a discount code through the Mod Squad Challenge. Uh, one of the awesome things that Kitchen Sink Stamps does since we're talking about foiling is they do offer printouts that you can do your own foiling. So here's some that we have shown in the past. We have um, candy corn. We have pine boughs. We have peppermints. So there are quite a few things that, oh yeah, the butterflies are gorgeous. Somebody did a card. Was it Meg that did the card with the butterflies? Was it Meg the one that won? No, Cheryl? Cheryl won. So here we have the butterflies that you can foil. Um, so they offer these f f uh, files that you can download and you keep them on your computer and you print out as many as you want and you foil them. And clearly I have a ton of them. Um, you know, obviously you would need a laser printer to do that. They have all seasons. Some Easter ones. So uh, they also have cut files for your stamps. They also have... Um, stencils you can cut out. Here I showed what it looks like when you overfoil with hot foil. I use different kinds of paper. You can ink blend on these. So you want to check out their whole website because they give a lot of information. They tell you different ink companies you can use if you wanted to um, layer your stamps with different companies like Altenu, Stampin' Up!, Memento, Catherine Pooler. You can download these and go to a print shop and have them print them out for you too if you don't have a laser printer. Yes, absolutely. Um, or you can print them out with your inkjet printer and use them as plain backgrounds or take them to the copy shop and again, get them to copy them as laser print um, sheets for you. So that's some of them. You can also make your own stencils. I mean, I could go on for days here with everything that they offer. Um, and I've been on the Kitchen Sink Stamps Design Team for a couple of years now, and I just love the quality of products. I love how she's always thinking outside the box. Um, here's some great fishing ones. So yeah, Kitchen Sink Stamps makes wonderful 3D looking stamps. They make these wonderful backgrounds that you can print and foil. And I'm only showing you some of them. They also give you free SVG cutouts that you can um, cut out your stamped images so you don't have to invest in the weight or money of dyes. They sponsor the Mod Squad Challenge. That's why we always encourage you guys to join the Mod Squad Challenge because it helps you hone your skills. You get a, 20, you get a chance of winning a gift card. I think it's 25 bucks gift card to Kitchen Sink Stamps. Um, and then they also have stencils, so you can cut your own stencils. So I'm going to give you guys the 
Nancy Stamps sneak peek here. These videos will be going up on Monday. I have five videos going up on Monday, but I am going to give them to you guys right now so you can make your list and then you can start shopping Monday at midnight. I will be getting on a plane at six o'clock in the morning, but my videos are all ready to go. Okay, so the first one um, is the sneak peek that I showed today. And if you are on a spending freeze right now, don't look. Okay. So this one is called Multi-Step Stars and Stripes. And oh my gosh, you guys. Tell me that doesn't look realistic. Now I do tell you in the video how I made this um, flagpole. And when I talked to Maria, she said, I'll, I'll make you a flagpole. And she did. This is how awesome this woman is. She made me a flagpole stencil. So I cut this out with my scan and cut. And this is a layered flagpole. And look at that. This is a stencil to go with that. So the flag is beautiful in its own. We have Veterans Day, Memorial Day, 4th of July, when we are supporting our troops. You know, when you're supporting your local police and fire and things like that. What a patriotic set. How beautiful is that? And now you have two types of flagpoles that you can very easily stencil. You cut this out. There's also the stars um, background. This is not new. This is already there. But we have the stars background Um that you can print out and foil. So um, my video will be going up on, all my videos will go up Monday morning for you guys to see all of these. But I love, love, love this stamp set. And I think it's a great patriotic theme. There's not a lot of uh, layered companies um, that make beautiful stamps, but to make a layered flag that looks like it is, you know, like flapping in the wind, can't love it. It's very easy to stamp out, you guys. It really is. So these are all coming out Monday midnight. Please remember to save and use my link. Please, please, please. That does help me out a lot. Okay. Um, this one is one that you guys asked me before. The daffodils. A little challenging doing the daffodils. They are not new. They've been out for a while. But what is new is the clay pot. So I did a video on the clay pot and the daffodils. So when you go to watch that, you'll get an introduction to the clay pot and also a re-education to the daffodils and how to line up the centers there. So this is the clay pots. Love these because we have the baskets and I've used the baskets all the time for all my florals. So when you have florals, having different types of baskets to use with them and these clay pots you have a large and a small so this is a nice staple to all of the florals that she offers so that's this one's called clay pots i think that's going to be a staple in a lot of people um, oh here's my actual flag one okay um moving on with the patriotic theme we have two sets of poppies so we have the multi-step poppy bouquet, which is what I've used here. And it has the poppies and the greenery and the leaves. Um, and then we have the sentiments. And then we have a single poppy, which is called remembrance poppy. And remembrance poppy has all of the sentiments. So she couldn't fit all of this onto one stamp set. So it's two stamp sets. You can get both or you can get one or the other. I love the sentiments on this set, but I love the greenery on this set. So it's personal preference. Maybe you get one now and you add the other later. But I know poppies symbolize a lot for a lot of people. So, um, you know, and having that memory of the World War, was it World War I veterans, right? Um, or was it World War II? Somebody told me. Um, but this is a beautiful set. And just even sympathy a lot of people just like poppies right sympathy thinking of you feel better um birthdays you can remember the women of vfw selling little poppies made of paper yep yep so these are beautiful patriotic sets but just a wonderful floral set and here you can see i've stamped them out here and again you get those little svgs so they cut out and I showed it using a couple of different Catherine Polar inks so you can get an orange one or a red one. They go great together or individually. 
So just a very nice, again, I just think that the patriotism um, theme that she has going on here with the flag and the poppies is gorgeous. Gordon, and tell me that doesn't look realistic. Like that's not popping off the page. Okay. Red poppy is the symbol of both remembrance and hope for peaceful future. Poppies are worn to show support for the armed forces community. Thank you, Stacy. You're welcome, Vivian. Susie was Air Force, right, Susie? So thank you for your service. We always support our armed forces. All right, now we're going to get into the fun stuff, which is Halloween. Halloween, Halloween, Halloween. I got to admit to you guys, this is the first year where I have made so many Halloween cards, and it's been a lot of fun for me. So you'll notice when you're getting your giveaways from me that I'll send you a Halloween card. I get it. Not a lot of people are into Halloween, but I think that having a, full, a few cool Halloween stamps is nice. If you have a friend or somebody that you, everybody knows somebody that's is totally in the Halloween, right? That's their thing. So it's nice to have that. So this one, um, I was really impressed with. This is the multi-step graveyard raven. And I think the two Halloween stamps were my favorites in this release. Um, look at this gravestone. Here lies the body of Mr. Alexander Leonard, who died December 2nd, 1730, aged 30 years. And that gravestone just looks so realistic. And then you have these other ones you can put in the background. And I use the cloud stencil, and we have a new bat stencil I'm going to show you guys. And look at this raven, and the girls know every day that I was working on this, I just kept saying, never more. <laughs> I had so much fun with it. But this one's called Graveyard Raven. You get the large tombstone, you get the smaller ones, you get some grass, and you get that layered raven. And I found that when I stamped these backwards, 4, 3, 2, 1, they worked out better for me. Uh, just take your time and practice them. But I think this came out really cool, really cool spooky scene for this one. Tracy says, Halloween is not big in Australia. Yeah, the grass can be used everywhere. Yep. And for those of you guys that love your kitty cats... Last year's Kitchen Sink Stamp Stamp Timber set was a Halloween set, and it came with a cat. Well, we have a little bit bigger kitty here. This is called Multi-Step Scaredy Cat, and I didn't use him in my card, but I did stamp him out here. So he's going to come with the larger kitty, the cauldron, and the smaller raven. And so here's the raven, the cat, the cauldron, and we have some bubbles, and we have some really cool, fun, creepy sentiments on there. And I had a lot of fun making this card. I don't think I'll give this card up because I had a lot of fun making it. So I used the Mystery Mansion from last year. You have the Staple Autumn uh, Moon. Autumn Moon and Owl is where the tree and the moon came from. Friends of the Moon is where the witch came from. So I combined a lot of stamp sets. Here's the gravestones, and then here is the cauldron. And this is the grass that I used as fire, and I put a little sparkle in the cauldron bubbles. But I had a lot of fun, you guys, making this slimline little Halloween theme. And I, I don't do a lot of like taking time to multi, you know, multiple stamp sets and making a full scene, but I really had a lot of fun with this. It was a joy to make this and I'm really proud of myself for making this. And I honestly don't think I'm going to share it with anybody. <laughs> yes, we know you love it, Abraham. There were quite a few stencils. Um, as I said, the flag stencil was one. Uh, there's a layered stars. I only cut out one layer, but there's a second layer. And this, this stencils are cool because these are not your typical six by six stencils. She made these really large on purpose because, again, everybody's doing slim lines. So she made these six by 12. So that way, if you want a six by six stencil, you have it. If you want a slim line stencil, you have it. If you want a you know, a two size stencil, you have it. So you can use this stencil because it's so, and you cut this out at home. You just buy this Mylar, which is in my Amazon shop. You cut this out at home. You cut it as many times as you want. You want to cut one for you and, and have one at your desk and have one at your, I don't know, your painting craft room. You can. Um, so there's 
layered stars, uh, stellar stars. So there's a um, another layer you can cut and it'll do the smaller stars inside. I didn't do that. And then we have bats. These are called haunting bats. And you have a lot of different sizes of bats. So you got large, mat, uh, medium. You got some flying upside down. Um, but you can use these in different sizes and directions. It's really not too much of a repetitive pattern here. I like that they're realistic looking and not cartoony looking. And again, we have that large size. And I just put these two on one sheet of mylar, 12 by 12 mylar, and I cut them both out at the same time, saving on my mylar. And then the last one is Distressed Chevron, which is just your, um, your chevron shape there, which is, a, again, a staple. I don't know why that hems in the Halloween all the time, but it does. So, so you have three different, actually four different stencils with the uh, flagpole one. Okay, so I've kept my flagpole stencil with my flag stamps. So you have six stamp sets. You have four different stencils. Um, a lot of fun goodies for Halloween. Please support Kitchen Sink Stamps. Is again, another small company. They are based out of California. Their stamps are made in the United States. They have fast shipping. Um, just high quality. She designs her own stamps. She makes them. Um, she's the artist behind them. A lot of great ideas. And just, again, excellent customer service um, when it comes to, to ordering from them. And now I'm done. <laughs> Any questions about anything else I have shown you guys tonight, whether it would be foiling I know I probably went on an hour longer than I should have, and I'm sorry for that. We have Kitchen Sink Stamps link. Please use that, and we have a small discount code. And we will be doing Stamp With Me. If you've never done Stamp With Me, it's where me and the girls get together, and we will be showing off this stamp set, showing you guys different ways that we're going to use it, different color schemes we're going to use. And if you don't have this, you can use the three-step butterflies or the giant sunflower. If you don't have these, put these on your to-do list. Monday is the new release. And I really appreciate you guys when you use my link. It does not cost you anything extra to use my link. But it lets Maria know that um, I sent you guys her way. Which helps me out. And of course they have all of this foil art that you can also download and use in the background. I think we're trying for Saturday, October 2nd. The link will be on my videos. And yes, it is an FSC. Um, I think I have that under die cutting. Let me look for you guys. In, in my Amazon shop, I believe I have it in die cutting. Hold on. Nancy Stamps. Okay, that's the link to the shop. Let me look up where it's at. I believe I have it in the die cutting folder because you would use it to cut. Or there's a stencil folder. I might have it under stencils. Hold on. Here we go, 15 pieces. Let me share this with you guys. It's under die cutting. It's 15 pieces of blank stencil sheets, square blank mylar, make your own stencils, 12 by 12. $12 for 15 sheets, so hold on. I have not tried laminator sheet, Susie, but I don't see why not. I would laminate it first. So fo fold it in half and laminate it so that you get this, and then you should be able to cut through it and make a stencil. I don't see why that wouldn't work. That's a good idea. Monday, Risa, Monday, yep. Yeah. Yep, 
Yeah, I would say that's, you know, if you guys want to try this. So this is a full eight and a half by 11 um, laminator folder and it was run through clothes so that it stuck on itself and then it was cut in half and it's used as mink folder. But you could cut this and make it stencil material too. That's a good idea. I never thought of that. Yep. And my videos will start going out at 9 a.m. So again, if you guys can please keep my kitchen sink stamp link. I really appreciate that. That helps me out a lot. Any other question, you guys? Thanks for hanging out with me tonight. I'm going to miss you guys next week. I will be in the middle of Florida. I think it's called Bowling Green, Florida. If anybody has any suggestions of what I can do in Bowling Green, Florida, let me know. I will be there Monday through Friday, and then I'll be home next weekend, and we'll do some more fun stuff. 9 a.m. Eastern, Sharon. Thank you. Thank you for asking that 9 a.m 9 10 11 12 9 10 11 12 1 o'clock so five videos for the five cards i just showed you guys yes we're gonna have more giveaways i mailed out everybody's giveaways for the last two weeks so everybody i saw a lot of packages going up on fsc so thank you for letting me know that you got it um, again, thank you to everybody who sends in things to go in that giveaway. We had giveaways from Lisa in California. We had Barbara. We had Diane. Um, if I missed anybody, I do apologize. I know a lot of you guys have sent me lots of stamps and inks and stencils. And so whatever you guys send me goes into the giveaway box. It goes into packages and gets shared with the rest of the FSC. So thank you guys so much for your generosity. Um, if you're going to de-stash your stuff and you want to see if anybody would like it, we certainly don't mind. But I will be honest with you, we try not to give away wooden stamps. We find a lot of people don't use wooden stamps anymore. Um, older ink pads like color box that you can't find um, re-inkers for. We, we don't generally give those kinds of things away. So if you have older stuff like that, I would recommend selling it on Facebook Marketplace or selling it uh, on D-Stash groups or giving it away in D-Stash groups. Uh, most of the stuff that we try to give away are very gently used newer items or um, items that uh, maybe you bought duplicates of. So we try not to do our giveaways with stuff that are, you know, just like crusty old nobody wants it anymore giveaways we try to make sure that it's good stuff we're giving away but we do appreciate when people send stuff in we get foils that all the time that people duplicate buy or they bought the wrong foils for the wrong foiling machines um we we try to to give you know and we try to spread it out so that everybody has stuff for giveaway so whatever i don't give away i share with tracy stacy chow um, so that when they do their giveaways, they have stuff as well. So thank you guys. We do appreciate everybody sharing all of their goodness. Yes, Lisa from Local King. Yep, all of the vendors, Crafty Critta, Kitchen Sink Stamps, Lisa. Um, Blue Knight Rubber Stamps has given me a lot, even though I'm no longer on the design team anymore. Blue Knight Rubber Stamps is amazing, and we always want to support those companies. And by the way, I did get the tickets. Tracy and I will be at the Allentown Stamp Show. It is October 30th and 31st, Saturday and Sunday. Tracy is going to be here all weekend with me. We do plan on going to the stamp show probably both days, Saturday and Sunday. So we hope to see you guys. We may be helping out um, with maybe Technique Junkies and Blue Night Rubber Stamps, but making our rounds and shopping as well. So if you guys see us, don't be afraid to say hi. We love meeting you guys. We love taking pictures with you guys. We love sharing ideas with you guys. Um, it's, you know, we're normal people like you guys are. So for us, it's getting to meet crafty friends from all over. And so those, Allentown is a pretty big show. It's a pretty good show. So if you can make the hike, it's October 30th and 31st 
Allentown Fairgrounds, Allentown, Pennsylvania. We are about an hour and 15 minutes outside of Philadelphia. We are about an hour and a half away from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, just to give you an idea. Um, but I, I, the more people that can show up and support these small companies, you can go online and buy the tickets. The website is Heirloom Rubber Stamp Show. So Heirloom Rubber Stamp Show to buy your tickets. Um, the website to buy used stamps would be um, look up um, stamping D stash groups. Uh, the company that I like to use is Cat Scrappiness has her own D stash group. I don't have that in front of me, but um, I'll post it in Foiling Snobs Club. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, block stamps can be removed from the block. Uh, yep. It's just expensive to remove them, put them on um, stamping foam, and to ship them that way. Or, you know, so I, we don't want to get involved in that. So if you guys want to do that, by all means, go right ahead. I have several wood stamps that I will not take off of there. They're just like my own little collector's editions. Um, wood stamps, I think that, you know, it's a reminder where stamping came from. Um, so I do like having some of mine on wooden stamps, but for the most part, I generally buy cling rubber stamps or clear rubber stamps. Great questions tonight. I really appreciate the interaction from everybody. T, I hope that you feel better. I know Tracy went to bed. I'm sure Stacy's right there and Chow's taking care of the baby. So I thank you guys for jumping on. Good night, everybody. Bye-bye.